Sheen Shots. Yeah, boy. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Sheen Shots channel. Today, we're going to be talking about Outward's faction quests and which one you should take to get the best rewards. There are four total faction quests in Outward, and these are pretty much the campaign of the game. There are side quests and DLC quests. But the four main faction quests are where the prime content of the game comes from. You will be unable to complete every faction quest on a single character. Additionally, the lore or story of Outward is complex and intertwines into all of the factions. This requires you to play the game at least four times to fully understand what is going on and who is who. Each faction quest also has unique rewards in the form of skills and equipment. It may be in your best interest to take one quest over another, depending on what build you decide to make. The first faction quest we will talk about is called the Blue Chamber Collective. To start this quest, you will need to head over to Berg in Enmerker Forest. Speak to Risa Aberdeen. She will be your sort of leader through this quest. You will spend some time in every region of the original game with this storyline, and it is probably the least difficult of the four. Although, they are all pretty equal in terms of difficulty, so don't expect a massive difference in that department. Some people don't like this quest, because it has you supporting the very system that makes you pay blood price or tax because of something your grandmother did. Risa Aberdeen also has a dark past, meaning this faction isn't really the most trustworthy of the four. As far as rewards go, you can get a total of five different big ticket items. Each step of the quest will give you small rewards, such as money or potions, but the big five are going to be what you are really looking forward to. You can get Blood of Giants, which permanently increases your health by 40. This will only be given to you if you make peace with the giants. Learn everything you can about their culture and try to make peace with them. It really sucks to miss out on this skill, so make sure to read the steps carefully. You can also get either the Lantern of Souls or Ancestor's Memories. This will only be an option if you help Roland out and save the Blue Lich. Ancestor's Memories increases your mana by 25, while the Lantern of Souls offers resistances to every element. Specifically, you get 10 resistance to fire, cold, Lightning, and Decay. It also gives a 20 resistance to Ethereal, making it very good for defense. This of course only applies if the Lantern is held in your left hand, meaning you must sacrifice an offhand weapon to use it. Once you finally complete the entire faction quest line, you will receive the Crimson Plate Armor Set. I believe you must survive the final fight to get the full set, so be sure to prepare for it. This armor offers a massive increase in cold defense, as well as cold damage. It has 7 protection and 59% damage resistance. It is a very good set of armor for more tanky character builds that play with cold weapons or magic. It is pretty heavy though, so be aware that it will slow you down and increase the cost of your movement. There is one last reward that is exclusive to the Blue Chamber Faction quest. This is a skill called Infuse Blood, and it consumes 20 health. In return, you gain decay damage on your weapon and inflict extreme poison, extreme bleeding, and leech health from your enemy. This skill is very, very powerful. It can be used to decimate your foes with only three or four hits. In order to get it, you must finish your Blue Chamber faction quest and head over to Caldera for some town building. This will require you to purchase the Three Brothers DLC as well as get the Cryptea City Hall upgrade. It can be learned from Anthony Bertholdt after doing so. The Blue Chamber faction quest line is a classic and teaches you the basics of how the laws and outward work. You get to learn a little bit about each region and fight some ghosts along the way. The next faction quest we will talk about is the Heroic Kingdom, and it is centered in the deserty town of Levant. Head over to Yazan there, and he will tell you how to get started. King Simeon and Queen Calixa are the rulers of this city, and they are having some trouble with two separate wars. Old Levant wants their land back, while the Blue Chamber Collective fights them as well. You will spend the majority of your time in the desert with this quest, so make sure you always have gear with hot weather defense. Tank builds are hard to run during this quest, because the heavy and slow armor will just kill your progress. A great deal of players like this story in this region because it frees you of the oppressive taxes back at Sierzo. Your leaders are also pretty respectable people who saved the land from a powerful beast not too long ago. Unfortunately, this faction quest offers only a small amount of rewards, but this is because one of the rewards is pretty powerful. Alchemical Experiment gives you plus 15% to all damage. This is more powerful than most damage buffs from other passive skills, giving you a pretty significant bump to damage you deal. You can only get this skill if you save the slums of Levant by completing the mouths to feed part of the quest. You can also get the Zagus Saw and Zagus Armor set. 
The Saw is a two-handed sword that does a large amount of physical damage. Nothing crazy, but it also inflicts pain, making it a great weapon to play with. The armor set offers a 25% damage bonus, as well as some pretty good defense. Oddly enough though, this set does not come with boots, so you have to take all the negative movement with only two pieces. Great for extra damage though. The sword will be dropped from Zagas himself should you choose to kill him. The armor will be offered to you once you complete the faction quest and do not die at the end of the Scourge fight. Once again, there is an additional skill you can get after completing your faction quest and heading over to Caldera to build the town. After purchasing the upgrade for the Alchemist shop, you can get Kirouac's Breakthrough, which gives you plus 25 health and increases all physical damage you deal by 15%. Once added up, you can get quite a large damage increase from this faction, which is probably why it gives you so few rewards compared to the others. As far as difficulty, this quest is one of the harder ones. Bandits in the desert are more difficult than the others, and you face them quite often while under the hot pressure of the sun. I would not be afraid to take it, however, as it is not extremely unbeatable or anything. The Heroic Kingdom faction quest is really fun, and you get to learn a lot about why the war is going on in the first place. Deal with murder, betrayal, and even get a glimpse of the massive war as you try to save Levant from starving or being overrun. Take this quest if you want to deal high damage and join forces with a powerful kingdom. The Holy Mission Faction Quest my personal favorite, and possibly the most lucrative of the four. Head over to the swamp and talk to Olil and Elat. These are the primary members of this quest, and they will have you spend time in Chersonese, the desert, and mostly the Hollow Marsh. You get to take orders from a literal god with this one, and the tasks he give you are the most unique compared to the other quests. The people from Caldera want some of Monsoon's land, and Monsoon is afraid they will lose territory. Elat, on the other hand, is worried about the Scourge and wants to find a way to defeat them. All of the story is pretty noble and religious, but nothing is as it sounds. You are forced to understand that even a god is far from perfect, and some decisions have grave consequences. The rewards are as follows, but not all can be obtained at once, so make sure to pay attention to the storyline. Acceptance, plus eight cold weather defense, plus eight hot weather defense. This is only given to you if you make peace with the priests during the Truth and Purpose mission. You must convince them to stay with Elat and not disband or attack you. Infuse Light. Infuse lightning onto your weapon for 12 mana. This is gained by joining the Holy Mission at the very beginning of the quest line. Purified. Plus 20 decay resistance. After completing questions and corruption, claim the blessing rather than giving it to Olil. Sanctified Assistance. Negative 5 stamina cost, negative 5 mana cost. This is given to the player if you do not find Zephyrian during Doubts and Secrets. It may seem like a good skill, but it's actually worse than another one that you can get. Spiritual Communion. Plus 10% Ethereal Damage, plus 10% Lightning Damage, plus 10% Decay Damage. Or you can have Divine Assistance. Negative 10% Stamina Cost, negative 10% Mana Cost. You must choose between Spiritual Communion and Divine Assistance. Both cannot be obtained at once, and this is only an option if you find Zephyrian, during Doubts and Secrets. Sanctified Protection. This offers plus two protection and is a guaranteed reward. Exalted. Life Drain, two times damage, negative 30% stamina and mana cost, plus 10% to all damage resistance. This is an extremely overpowered passive skill, but it comes at a grave price. You gain it by sacrificing yourself at the end of the quest line and taking on decay damage to save the queen. Slowly, your life will drain up to negative 90% of your maximum health. This renders you almost completely dead in one hit, and once you do die, you will be sent to the in-between, a zone that essentially ends the game for the character unless they want to continue on in co-op mode. This perk is, of course, optional, however, and can be completely avoided if you want to continue using that character for much more content. The Radiant Wolf Sword is a one-handed sword that does pure lightning damage. It can only be obtained when talking to the three priests and the Lotus Flower, and you must choose Dialogue Option 3 every single time to receive it. This will prevent you from getting Acceptance, though, so it is another one or the other situation. The Candle Plate Armor Set will be given to the player at the end of the Holy Mission Faction Quest. I believe you only get the full set if you survive the last fight, though, so watch out for that. The total set gives you a huge amount of physical, fire, and lightning defense. It is a heavy set, so it will slow you down, but the tankiness of this armor is nothing to laugh at. After building the new Sirocco town, you can buy the upgrade for the chapel and get Elat's Intervention. This skill gives the player plus 2 barrier and plus 5 protection, making you even more of a tank. It is possible to get an insanely high amount of defense if you pair this skill with certain armor sets. 
The holy mission offers a crazy amount of skills and other rewards that it is hard to choose anything over this one. The holy mission is a really fun faction quest that teaches you much more about the Scourge and how the world became what it is today. You get to see how a person's faith can be questioned, and how different people react to the negative aspects of their faith. Be sure to make the trip to Monsoon if you can. Oh, and Olila is just a really cool gal. If you hate her, there really is something wrong with you. The last faction quest option in Outward is the Sorobor Academy. This was added in with the Soroborians DLC, so you will be unable to take it if you do not own that add-on. It does offer massive amounts of extra content though, so definitely worth a buy if you don't already have it. This quest largely remains in the Antique Plateau, and you only really leave here to head into the desert for a little bit. The premise of this quest is quite noble, as the wizard here is trying to cure Immaculates, one of the more deadlier versions of the Scourge. He wants to free them from their hate of Elat, so that they can live in peace and stop fighting humans all the time. Of course, we learn in another faction quest that this process used the lives of innocent men to be accomplished, so not exactly the perfect people to side with. It is noticeably more difficult than the other faction quests. You will face much more challenging enemies in this region much earlier on than you normally would. A lot of the enemies can be skipped or made peace with though, so don't be afraid to take this challenge. By far the best reward in Outward is called Logistics Expert, and can be learned by doing as many of the quests as you can during Cloak and Dagger. It will reduce your cooldown of skills by 10%, increase your speed by 5%, and increase your pouch capacity by 5%. This skill lets you speed up your fights and is a really good passive to have in your deck of cards. The other reward we get from this faction quest is a choice between three different options. Preferential treatment. All items are negative 15% cheaper to buy and sell for 15% more. Reduce the prices in Hermatin's market to regular. Gain access to Lockwell's private potion stock. This reward is not all that good and preferential treatment is by far the best of the three. The extra potions from Lockwell is pretty cool though and might be worth it if you don't need to worry about money anymore. The final reward from this faction is either the Sar Bow or Sar Chakram. This is the only way to obtain either weapon and they are completely indestructible. Both do extremely high physical damage and can be obtained after completing the end of the Sora Boar faction quest. You really only want the Chakram if you bought those skills, so take the bow in case you need to do some long range attacks later on. These are really cool weapons that are better than most bows or chakrams. Once again, you can get an extra skill if you head over to Caldera and build the town. This skill is called Infuse Mana and requires you to buy the upgrade for the enchanting building. It allows the user to use Infuse Ethereal damage onto the weapon at the cost of 35 mana. It is an insanely powerful skill because Ethereal damage is the best in the game. Very few enemies are resistant to it and this allows you to always have extra damage in your back pocket. The Sora Boar faction quest is by far the best in terms of lore. You actually get to work side by side with some of your most fearsome foes. Not only that, but certain options can turn the local Wolfgang mercenaries against you. It offers a pretty cool storyline that sends you to hidden workshops and abandoned buildings with skeletons hanging outside. Some of the characters of this quest are pretty colorful and lead very different lives from others of different regions. I highly recommend this faction quest if you want a bit of a challenge and are deep into the lore of Outward. There you go guys, that was all the rewards from the four faction quests in Outward. Each is extremely unique, and the story of the entire game is mixed into all of them. Every group has their own goals and desires, but there is only one result in the end. It is interesting to see how each group got to the same point after such a long battle. Each quest definitely better suits a different playstyle, so make sure to review the rewards before you decide to take any one quest. Hopefully, this guide was helpful to you, and if so, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time.